Can you hear me now? <laughs> I was talking to you guys the whole time. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. Well, let me start over. <laughs> Welcome to Cabbage Fat Soap. My name is Laura, and today we are going to be making some hand-formed pumpkin soaps. And we're also cutting this soap, which is the Wizard of Oz soap. And I was saying hi to Shauna. And Shauna has um, a channel as well. It's Nizumi Soaps, and you guys should check it out. She makes some really cool soaps. And she does a lot of like little embeds and things that are super cute. And hi, Stacy, welcome. I'm so sorry, guys. The microphone was muted, apparently. Ah, oh, well. Okay, what I was saying about this is that uh, we made this um, Wizard of Oz soap last time and the fragrance I was using was new. I've never used it before and it started accelerating. And so this was supposed to be, uh, this gray part here was supposed to be the tornado and I was gonna do like a feather swirl and I don't know if it worked or not. So we'll see what happens. This is gonna be a surprise for me as much as it is for you. Um, things that I expect could be in here is possibly air bubbles. Uh, maybe the design didn't come out at all. We'll see. Yeah, drum roll. Uh, more like funeral march. We'll see what happens. If it doesn't turn out, I can always remake it, but I don't have any more of that fragrance, though I probably would use something different if I was to redo it. Okay. <clears throat> the suspense, right? Okay, I'm making sure I'm cutting it the right direction, because that would just be... Yeah, okay. All right. Okay, let's take one out of the middle. Oh, hey, look at that. Okay, so there's no air bubbles so far. Let's see, you just got done watching that video trying to catch up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, funeral march is how it feels. So the blue was supposed to represent Dorothy's dress, and the yellow was supposed to be the yellow brick road. And then here's the tornado. So you can see it did it did come down, but the, it, the gray part of the tornado is only a little bit here, but the design carried through. So that's okay. That's way better than I thought. Um, this, there you go. There's the other side. And to be fair, it smells really, really, really good. Um, so, I mean, I would use that fragrance again, but I think if I was to use it again, I would either work more quickly or use a different, more simple design. So here's the other bar on the side there. And then this is the, um, like the outside edge of the bar. And that swirl tool I used didn't go all the way to the edge, so you can only see the tornado a little bit there. When I plane these soaps, that should show a little bit more. But it looks fine on this side. You know, it looks the same as the others. And, and yeah, this was Waikiki Melon. So it's like it has a little bit of berry notes in it, but it's mostly that melon. But it smells really, really fresh and clean and um, very bright smelling, which is what I wanted. Let me just see what you guys are saying here. Small tornado tail. <laughs> I suppose if you're going to have a tornado, the smaller the better, right? Yeah, that's what they look like before they touch down, yeah. Am I going to try again with a different fragrance? We'll see. Um, I, I don't hate this, honestly. Um, I could try again if you guys want me to do it again. Oh, here, see this side. It showed up on both sides just fine, so that's good. Um, but yeah, I, I may. I may try this again. If you guys want me to, see, what I want is like a community tab so that I can put like, you know, do you guys want me to redo this, yes or no? And then um, and then if you guys say yes, I'll remake it. So here's the end, end pieces. But I need to have uh, 500 subscribers to get the community tab. So... Hopefully that's my goal is to get to 500 so I can get that tab. But if you guys if you guys leave in the comment uh, leave a comment in the chat right now letting me know if you want me to redo it or not. And if you do, then uh, I will I will remake it. So, but I mean honestly, like I said, I'm not mad at it. It looks fine. Um, but I think with the more fluid batter, that tornado would have come down a little bit further. Oh yeah, she did, Stacy. Yeah, I heard. I saw her. Um, I saw Wanda's video about the glow in the dark lantern. That was super cute. And I heard her mention me. Yeah, yeah, Shauna, I'll get there eventually. <laughs> eventually. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's 
that's my hope. But that's what I that's what I really want. Because there are so many times where I want to be able to tell you guys, you know, I'm not feeling well, or I, there was a change of plans or something, or you know, to ask your opinion if you want to see one soap or another. Like maybe I have a design in mind, and I don't know which guys you guys want to see first, and I don't have any way of doing that unless I do the video. And for people who don't see the lives, a lot of times they don't leave. Um, a comment about their preference. And I think if I just had a way where somebody could easily click and give an answer, um, that would be super helpful. Plus it gives you guys a way to, you know, communicate back with me as well. Oh, the one before that, Stacey, I must've missed that one. Sometimes YouTube doesn't recommend videos to me in order. I'll have to go back through her channel and, and rewatch the videos. It wasn't showing me her videos for like months. And when that happens, I have to go through my subscribe, you know, the people that I subscribe to, like, one at a time, and, like, find all their videos manually. I have to do that with Shauna's videos all the time. It, um, it just doesn't recommend them to me, even though I watch all of them. It's really stupid. I don't understand how the algorithm or any of that works. So, all right, let me put this... Back. I'm going to put this back on the shelf so we have room because this little project is going to take up quite a bit of space. Oh, and I forgot to get the little, my little dishes. Hmm. I'm trying to decide how I want to do this. I think I'll just use the containers. That'd probably be the easiest way. Let's see. Probably only need, probably only need two. We shall see. Yeah, it is. It does need to stop messing with people. I said she had the same thing happened with my channel. Yeah. Yeah, isn't that weird how it'll just unsubscribe you? It's so bizarre. Yeah, it is really hard when you're trying to grow. And, and, and like, they don't tell you. Like, they don't say, oh, by the way, we're unsubscribing people from you for no reason. As soon as they wonder... I mean, it's got to be just like some weird glitch, but yeah, it does, it does frustrate me if I have like a month where I get like, you know, 10 new subscribers and then a month where I lose one and that doesn't make any sense. And then just to find out that YouTube is unsubscribing people from me, which means I have to probably go back and manually look up everybody's channels. Another one that it stopped showing me was Felicia's channel. It stopped showing me her channel, her, her videos. And um, I keep forgetting to go and look them up. Like, I'll go and I'll watch one, and then it won't recommend any to me. And I don't know. Yeah, Shauna does. She does a lot of really fun um, soap. She did, like, this gummy bear one with little gummy bears. She made all these... It's really uh, tedious to go and make all these little things, but she made all these little tiny t um, gummy bears. And um, what's the last one you did? Pineapples. That was what it was. She did one with pineapples. That sounds really good. Okay, so here's the project. I have all this uh, scrap soap, and uh, this is like. Well, this is this is one that I I just um, mushed this together a few minutes before I started to make. I wanted to check the consistency, but uh, this is like little pieces of soap. Um, this is like when I plain the soap, I get left with these um, papers. So it's not paper; it's just paper thin pieces of soap, and then the shreds. And what I did in this is I uh, put a little bit of water to soften it, and we're just going to kind of mush it together. We're going to rescent it. It's already got some fragrance from the soaps that are in here, but of course it's a big, um, what would you call it? Like variety, I suppose, of fragrances that aren't all, you know, they're not all going to be perfectly delicious smelling together, but I have found that that doesn't matter. It still smells somehow, even with everything mixed, it still smells good, but I want to put a new scent. And uh, because we're doing pumpkins, I thought we would use the pumpkin pie fragrance. And uh, yeah, the pineapple beer soap. Yep, yep. Yeah, it 
It does. And the, the beer and soap. Um, I made a beer soap and I, I think I fragranced it with um, bay rum. That's what it was with bay rum. And uh, beer soaps are nice because they're really super bubbly. And they don't smell like beer, really, when you're done. They, they just smell like the fragrance. It's kind of strange. You would think that it would smell strong of beer, but it doesn't. I'm always so kind. Well, you're always so kind, too. It kind of kind of works out that way. Okay, let me... Okay, so we got this kind of gloopy mess of, of soap scraps. And have no fear. I have about three more bucketfuls of this stuff, so I will not run out if we decide to do more of this. Um, this is going to require a changing of gloves, though, partway through, because, um, yeah, as you can see, this is probably not coming off. Okay, so this is the fragrance. It's called Pumpkin Pie. I've used it before to make soap, and it smells really, really, really good. It smells uh, like you can smell the, the pumpkin in there. You can smell the spices. You can smell the, um, hmm, what do you call it? The pastry, I guess, like the crust, you can like that buttery um, bakery scent. And I'm just going to add a little bit because this fragrance is really, really strong. And we're not going to put this through saponification. So there's not going to be any loss of scent. And let's see what you got to say here. Oh, thank you, Shauna. I didn't know you actually, uh, I didn't know you got to use it yourself. That's great. I'm glad you liked it. I like the bay rum smell. That's a really good one. And the, one of the other ones that I didn't think I would like, but it ended up smelling completely different than I thought. It was called um, uh, Cuban Tobacco. That one's from Wellington. If you want a really good, like, I don't, I don't know why it's called Cuban Tobacco, but I don't know. It just smells amazing. It's supposed to be a gender neutral fragrance. Oh, it smells so good. So I always make that soap with different designs because I really like it. So what I'm doing is just making sure that the scent goes through the whole batch. I'm just gonna, yep, that smells really good. I might put a couple more drops in here, but mm, yeah, maybe a couple more drops. I want it strong, but I don't want this to gag people when they smell it because it's so strong. I found that like bakery scents tend to get super, super strong and then they're, they can be, for me anyway, they can be a little bit overwhelming. But some people like that, you know, like I had a lot of people who like the, I have a blueberry cobbler fragrance and a blackberry, no, black raspberry, blackberry vanilla. That's what it is. Blackberry vanilla. And those two are overwhelming. Me. They're so strong, but other people would say, oh no, this is my favorite. So everybody's different and however much fragrance they can handle. Okay. Now let's see what this smells like. Okay. That's better. That's really, really good. Let me see what you guys are saying here. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, Stacy, right, right, right. So Wanda wanted to know if you can melt soap scraps down. You can't really melt them with heat because it's not melt and pour, but she could get them wet. And another thing that I do with mine, like I send those little netted bags with the samples. If you put the soap in the little netted bag like that, you can use the whole bag. So I have, um, if she has a bigger netted bag, like the little, they have a word for that. Like you can use a muslin bag or, I don't know, it's not tool, but it's sort of like that, that mesh. Anyway, if she puts all the scraps in one of those little bags, she can just hold the bag and use it like almost like a washcloth, but like there's soap inside of it and she just gets it wet and you can scrub. That's what I do with my soap scraps. I just put them in one of those bags and wash with it like it's a bar of soap, but it's a bag of soap. One with a clock. I was thinking of all those soap samples. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll have to watch that, Stacy. I'll go and I'll answer her question for her too, because um yeah, the samples, um, and also the scraps too. Like sometimes you get down to the end of a bar of soap and there's just a little bit left and it's just gonna get gross sitting in a dish. So like what do you do with it? And I save my little scraps and put them I just put them in that bag. It works really, really good. Okay, so enough enough messing with this here. Um if I need if I need this to get uh, like more moisture, there's a little bit of distilled water in here to help this soften up. But I can always do this with the distilled with the um, rubbing alcohol. And what this will do is just if I need it a little bit more moist, but I don't want to add more water, 
I can I can add that in. So ugh, smells terrible. Okay, let me take these gloves off because I want to put new because these gloves are gonna get pretty funky. And you know what? Let me get a piece of a uh, parchment paper to set these on. I wasn't sure if I was gonna need it, but I think it'd be a good idea if I had it. I put it. Oh, I put it up here. Okay. Now let me get let me get new paper. I had some, and I must have uh, used it on the last live that we did and just forgot. So let me go grab a new sheet. I'll be right back. Okay, so here is my parchment paper. I'm feeling a little bit spacey today. I feel like I'm missing something obvious. Hi Wanda, welcome. I hope your internet cooperates. We were just talking about you. So Wanda, we were just talking about your uh, your channel and how um, YouTube was not recommending your videos to me for some reason. And I thought you stopped posting. <laughs> so I went and looked at your channel and saw that you had all these videos. So I'm starting to watch them and try to catch up again. Um, I know I saw the one where you made the lantern and the one where you showed us the pyramid. Um, but then Stacey said that you were asking about the little soap samples and what you can do, I was just uh, telling Stacy, is I usually send like little little fabric bag things with the samples. If you get a bigger one of those, any kind of like fabric bag, um, just put all the soap samples in that. Even like the ends of soap, like if you have a full bar of soap and you get down to a small piece, and just keep putting samples and little bits of soap in there. You could use that bag like it's a bar of soap. Just get it wet and scrub with it, and it, it doubles as a washcloth. So you can do that because that's a uh, handmade soap, like made from scratch. So you can't really melt it down, but you can get it wet. And like uh, Stacy said, you were going to make them wet and mush them together. Um, but here, in fact, kind of funny that that came up because that's what this is. This is all the little pieces of soap that I have uh, like like shaved off and whatnot in, in here. I'll show you some more pieces because I need to add a little bit more soap for this anyway. Um, I have uh, these giant like four quart size bucketfuls. I've got a whole bunch. And so I just take these scraps and we break them up and put them in here and then mix them up. So right now it looks like recycled paper and that's fine because this is recycled soap. And all these soaps have different things in them. Some of them have like kale and clay and oatmeal in them. Some of them are made with almond milk. And some of them have essential oils. So it's got a really good variety of things in here. Because this paste that I made is a little, a little bit on the wet side for what I want to do with it. So I just want to add a little more soap. Let me see what you have here. Oh yeah, hopefully your your internet stays working. That's always a pain when you want to do something online and the internet just stops working, especially when you're kind of counting on it to get work done. Let's see if I have some other smaller pieces in here. Okay, we should probably get going on this because this is gonna be super boring to watch me just crumble soap the whole time. All right. This is also a very fun project to do, and it's also fun to do with children if you have kids or if you work with kids at all, if you ever have kids over, to take pieces of soap scraps. This would be like a good preschool project because there's really nothing they can, there's no like lie or anything. There's nothing to hurt themselves with. Um, you just uh, take the shredded soap. I put in a little bit of distilled water to make it soft. And then what we're going to do next is 
divide up the colors because we're going to roll them in color. So I've got three different colors here. I have this gold. So I thought we could do some shiny gold ones. I have this um, gold or orange. It's called Orange Vibrance. And this color, which is like a, a nutty spice color, it's called Sugar and Spice. It's really, really pretty. And this gold is called uh, Maya Gold. They're all from Nurture Soap, but you can use them in, you know, resin and other stuff too if you want. And I have a link below. It is an affiliate link, but it doesn't cost you anything extra to order from them. Um, using my link or you know going there directly or whatever it just helps me out a little bit and hopefully uh this will turn out like my soaps that i've done in the past this way and i think i have some left over i can show you let me see here oh good it's working now wanda you can see what i'm doing i hope so earlier nobody could hear me because i had my microphone muted genius all right, so you can see how this is like a spicy kind of a, it looks like mixed spices or something. It's really, really nice. But I want to add some orange to it. I didn't want to go straight orange vibrance because I think it's a little bit too bright. And I wanted this orange to be a little more natural looking. So we're going to mix these two colors and we're going to see what happens because happy accidents, right? Let's hope. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. Yep, that's a slightly tamer orange color. Yeah, thank you. I love this gold. I've been using it now for almost all of my gold. I have a couple other golds that I use for other things, but most of them are that one because it has a nice amount of, like, uh, what do you call it? Like, it has a nice amount of metallic to it, but it's not super gaudy. All right, so I do have some. So let me show you. I made these ages and ages ago like years ago, um, looks like they might be a little dusty. I basically just had them out on display and uh, these are not you know, used. I don't sell these because they're ancient. To be honest, because they're so old, they probably would work better. But anyway, uh, these were for Christmas and you can see it's like a little ball of soap, but it's covered in gold and it's just shiny and sparkly. I made some in different colors. I have gold, silver, and then some that I left plain. And anyway, yep, so that's kind of what we're going for, except I'm thinking we could maybe make them into pumpkin shape. All right, so I'm just cleaning the gloves off. All right, so I didn't want to get too much of that any one color on my gloves. So let's just uh, mix this up a little more. Because the stuff on the bottom is a little wet. Stuff on the top that I just added now is too dry. So mix them together and hopefully get a happy medium. And I thought of maybe dyeing, like adding the mica to this mix to give it a more cohesive color, but I don't think that's a good idea because it's just gonna, I don't know, I, th I think it'll make everything too muddy. Unless I made it a color, like it's sort of a grayish blue, like maybe we could add gray or maybe we could add blue, but I don't think, I don't think that's really ideal. So I'm just gonna leave it. Plus it'll make the soap pretty when you use it, there'll be speckles of different colors. Okay, so let's start with this. Let's see what you're looking at here. What were you guys just saying? We see the together they're just right, like the three bears. Yeah. Okay. So basically, we're just going to make this into like a round ish shape and I like to squeeze it down as much as I can to get those pieces as close together as possible. And I don't, I don't measure or try to get them all perfect because that's a level of stress that nobody really needs to worry about for this. Okay. I try to get them round. I'm going to see if this is going to roll at all. Okay. It looks like it's going to be okay. I'm just going over where there's any large like bumps or places where the soap isn't smooth and just kind of pressing it down. Each time I've made these, I've had to do it slightly differently. 
because this soap has been uh, curing for quite a while. So it's going to be like the little pieces are a little bit firmer. They're not, they're not, you know, sticking together as readily as say fresher soap would because the fresher soap is still like a little bit moist. So it just kind of automatically sticks to itself. So I have to be a little more gentle with this, but once this dries, it'll be rock hard. So just a matter of kind of coaxing it into the shape I want. Okay. All right, so we got a roundish shape. So I'm just gonna show you uh, the process that I that I use. I'm not worried about getting this perfect because perfection is pretty much impossible. All right, so this is the gold. So why don't we start with that one? I'm just going to roll it around in here. And if I had a flatter dish, like a wider dish, that would probably be better, but this is this is what I've got to work with. All right, so we got this covered in gold now. Um, whoops. Almost dropped it. That would have been bad. All right. So I think for this to be a pumpkin, I want to like push the tops down and top and the bottom to kind of like I'm kind of doing this motion like this, squeezing a little bit to get it more of a pumpkin-y shape. There we go. That's good. Okay. So now we've got our first one. Got a little piece there. All right. So I'm going to set this down. And for the stems and stuff, I don't want to do that now because I don't want to risk this breaking apart. I'm going to wait until these are completely dry and then I can glue on the stems. I can use some soap dough or something. And then um, the way you would glue something on is by getting some of these like soap scraps, getting them wetter, a little bit, a little bit more wet and making like a paste. And then you can kind of glue them on and then that way they'll stay. It's all soap. But yeah, so now I'm, I'm just messing with it because... Yeah, anyways, so now you see I've got kind of a pumpkin-y shape, but I want to do the lines. And let me get this. We're gonna try it with the I'm gonna try doing the lines. I'm I'm not sure. But here is a chopstick, and we're just going to like push it in here and kind of go around a little bit. There. Yeah, that's actually working. Okay, so what I'm gonna do since this is also removing the color, I'm gonna put some of this gold on here. Hopefully that'll stop it from picking the gold up off the soap. And I can always go over this with a brush and anywhere that the mica comes off, I can just add more. Okay, so I'm gonna go around like that. And the reason I decided to make these today is during the last live, somebody asked me if I was gonna, or when I was gonna do the Halloween soaps and I was trying to decide what to make and then I remembered these. So your guys' suggestions always give me inspiration. So see, now we got those little lines going down. This could also be done with like some string maybe, or um, maybe like a toothpick if you wanted a finer line. But I kind of like this. I'm gonna do it like this here. Whoops. Getting a little bit too confident and <laughs> pushing that in too far. Okay, there we go. Let's do one more here. Right there, yep. Okay, hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. Yeah, okay. And then, like I said, I can either paint those lines with the gold or leave them even. Um, I kind of like that. It gives it like a rustic look. And then I'll come in later and put the stems. Let me see what you're saying here. Oh, okay, Wanda, yeah, the, the mica is from Nurture Soap. I have links down below where I get everything. Yeah, the Halloween soap, I I usually have it made by now, but I haven't, like, normally it's the kids who, like, children who like the Halloween soaps more than the adults, and for them, I make, like, glow-in-the-dark stuff, so I wasn't really sure what to make, but I do have some bats, and uh, somebody wanted me to do, like, a diorama. It was um, uh, Love Yourself was her name, and uh, Love Yourself wanted me to do, like, a diorama of, like, the different different things and one of them included like a graveyard scene and I thought well that'd be kind of cool to do the seasons but um but yeah I haven't seen her around but I'll probably still make it yeah 
Yeah, Wanda, you can crumble you can crumble up the soap and add, if you want to do it just like I'm doing, yeah, you would just crumble the soap up, add a little bit of distilled water. And the reason I use distilled is you don't want anything in here to like go bad. And the distilled distilled water doesn't have anything added to it. There's no um I guess I shouldn't say there's nothing added to it. It's distilled, so all that is taken out of the water. So it's less chance of it growing funky stuff. Okay, so see how this is a big chunk of soap, so it's flaking off. I'll just crumble that back into the bowl and mix it up. And, uh, yeah, and that just makes it a little bit wet, so it kind of sticks together. Kind of like, I don't know if you've ever used, like, paper clay, like where you shred newspaper and then add water and use it like clay to build stuff. It's sort of the same concept. Trying to get these roughly the same size. They're not going to be exact. They're not, I guess, this impossible. I could weigh them all out, I guess, but if they're going to look like real pumpkins, they're going to have to be a little bit different. Okay, I'm going to roll this around to pick up the little bits that are on here. Okay, so that's picking up all the loose soap pieces that we had on there. That's actually That actually came together really nicely. Oh, it smells really good. It smells like a slice of pumpkin pie. Oh, wow, Wanda. Yeah, your Halloween project's on September 1st. I have to make mine early because the soap takes so long to cure. I do have some resin, actually, and I've been wanting to do some resin projects, but I'm trying to figure out how to tie it into soap, and so far I haven't come up with anything. So this is that spice mixed with the orange. I like this a lot. This is not like bright neon orange and it's not like just brown see that's a really pretty combination i'm gonna have to make a soap with this i really like this um so let me go ahead and do like i did before i'm just going to kind of squish down the top and the bottom a little bit here try to give it that slightly less round and slightly more pumpkin shape okay there we go so we got that little indent in the top Oh yes, yeah, Stacey, I saw her her soap dish. The um, it was a draining soap dish, which is really important because if you, if it doesn't drain, then the soap just kind of turns to mush and dissolves. She made it. Uh, it was cool. She was doing this. If you guys, for those, I think it's whoever hasn't seen Wanda's soap dish, it was really cool. She had this neat idea of taking a little bit of. Uh, like a silicone, like a cross, and sticking it in the top of the soap dish. And then when she made it, it came out and it worked, except that accidentally, well, I won't spoil it for you. Suspense. You'll have to go watch and see what happened. It came out really cute in the end. Oops. Press that down. Okay, I do one more of these little lines. There's a bunch of little fruits and vegetables that have designs like this. Like you could do bell peppers, make it a little bit more elongated and make these green, red, and yellow. And you could do bell peppers. So this would be cute for summertime also. Also any spots like on the bottom here <clears throat> where the soap, like bits of soap from the bottom stuck to this after I put the color on, you just dip your finger in the mica and put it like this on here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Also, Wanda, the um, I know you asked about the mica. Uh, mica, most not all mica is soap safe, so um, you have to get soap safe mica. That's why I get it from places like Nurture Soap or places that sell soap supplies. But the soap safe mica is safe to use in things like resin. Usually, as far as I know, everybody who's done both has told me that that's how they've done it. And the reason you want soap safe safe mica is for soap is because uh. Some of it isn't approved to be used on skin. And the other reason is because mica can change color in soap. So, for example, for a long time, it was really hard to find a purple mica that stayed purple in soap. It would just turn gray every single time. And the people who make the micas for soap finally came up with a purple that didn't turn gray or a nasty color. And that's what this is. I'm trying to clean it off. But uh, this purple here, I don't know if it's showing up purple on screen, but it's like a very bold, true purple. And it stays exactly the same color in soap. So... If you're going to make soap from scratch, just keep that in mind. If you're just melting down bits of scraps and stuff, it doesn't matter so much. Just make sure that it's skin safe. Um, but otherwise, the color will probably stay the same because it's not going through saponification. And I'm trying not to just do this reaching over the camera like that, but 
running out of space here. Let's see what you guys are saying. You're welcome, Wanda. Glad I could give you some information here that's helpful. Yeah, the the self the self draining spout on that on that uh, dish is really really good. The the dishes that I use are basically little wooden like slats like this, and those work really good too. But if you want something that's more like personalized or that has a more elegant design or something, the ones that you made with the resin were perfect for that because they look really really nice and you can personalize them and everything. Okay, so we got another one. And I'm going to try not to make the top as wide as I did on the others. Just going to squeeze these back together as I go around. Kind of make the divot in the top. There we go, like that. Try to make this one a little bit, I don't know if taller is the right word, but I want this area around here to be more narrow. I guess if I had narrower fingers, that would help. But I'm working with what I got. All right, I'm just going to make sure that this will stand on its own. Okay, that looks good. Okay, maybe we'll do a little squat pumpkin after this one. Oops. Okay, there we go. Oh, we forgot to, I forgot to coat it first. That was silly of me. Oh, well, we could just coat it now, I guess. Or just leave it like that. Call it the recycled newspaper pumpkin. Let's do. I was going to see if we could do, do a little bit of each color. Let's see if. The, well, I don't want to. I'll do it on the next one if I can get it around. If I can, I mean, roll it. You know what I mean. Do this before I put the indents in. This is what I get for being distracted. I guess this is why I don't do resin because I would definitely be unmolding it before it's cured and doing all those things you're not supposed to do. Nobody around here does that, fortunately. Okay. Getting all the excess off. So the thing with these is that um, there's a lot of people who don't like the color coming off like on their soaps. They don't like they don't like when they wash the soap and it leaves all this color behind. These will, obviously because the the mica isn't in in the soap, it's just on the surface. So they're a little bit more delicate and when you wash with them, the color will come off pretty much right away. So that's the, the upside. The, the color isn't going to stick around. You can just wash with it. It goes away and it'll go down the drain. But uh, so either, you know, if you want to keep the, the, the pretty shinies on, then you will have to uh, leave these as like a display. But honestly, they're not that sturdy because they're soap. And I would just say to use them because I can always make more. And uh, I will always have scraps unless I just start throwing them away, but that's wasteful. All right. Two. I've heard that there are places where you can donate soap scraps, but I don't know how to get in contact with those people. So I might have to do some research because I would like to have a way of donating extra soap because I have so much of it. Especially things like experiments and stuff that I end up, you know, not using or whatever. Okay. And I'm trying not to make these lines perfect because on a pumpkin they're they're not perfect. They're not perfectly like symmetrical and all this. There we go. Okay, so that one came out pretty cute. Let's put that here. And then I will get the next one. And let's make a more like squat little pumpkin. Let's try that. Yeah, faster curing resin. I know I would definitely, I don't know if I had the patience. I think what I would have to do is do the pour at night before I went to bed because otherwise I would be hovering over it, like watching a pot boil. And yeah, I would have to do it like before bed and then that way it would get at least a few hours to cure before before I woke up and just couldn't stand it any longer. That's what happens with my soap. The only reason... The only reason that these soaps don't get cut like four or five hours after I make them is because I know I have to save them for the live. So it slows me down because I could make, I don't know, I could make hundreds of bars a day 
and what would I do with them? So I have to be careful. I'd run out of supplies in a week. It'd be terrible. I guess I could make all the videos in like one day and then plot them out for the next, you know, schedule them out for the next couple of months. But I don't know. I feel silly doing that. And also there's a lot of editing. All right. Speaking of editing, um, Shauna does a really good job editing her videos. She does like an intro and an outro and all this stuff. And I'm over here like, I think the camera's turned on. Maybe my microphone's turned on. All right, Shauna, have a great night. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, Wanda, you can put the soap scraps in a mold after they get wet, but they have to dry before you can take them out. And depending on how wet they get, it might that might be a really long time, especially if the mold is a, um, what do you call them? Like the molds you use for resin, you know, the silicone. If you use a silicone mold, that those tend to really hold in the moisture. So you would want to either... Hmm, how would I how would I explain this? Either make it just slightly damp so that the soap barely holds together, uh, and then you might want to smush it into a very fine paste so that there's not a lot of big pieces of soap. The other thing you can do is instead of using water, use rubbing alcohol. And I've done that before, and that works really really well. But you just have to practice with it, and you'd want to start with molds that were like had straight sides. So you don't want something that like starts out narrow narrow and gets wide like this because you know, when you go to like peel the mold off, like you do with resin, it would it would mush the soap that's on the inside. So if you have something that's kind of straight sided, uh, like like this mold over here, like this, where it's just like an oval shape. I mean, it can have like detail down at the bottom, but you don't want anything that that has like a narrow top and a wide base because it'll crush the soap when you try to take it out. So here's what we'll do with this one. Actually, let's do one more, one more of this color here. And then after that, I'll do one with both colors. I want to see if we can do like a half and half or something. Or maybe, actually, I could just dust it. Like I could make it orange, this orange color, and then dust it with the gold after. Okay, well, we're going to go for a squat looking pumpkin on this one. So let me try to, whoops, try to flatten it out without totally smushing it. There we go. And also, Wanda, they make skin safe glow in the dark mica. I just thought you should know that. And there are biodegradable glitters that you can use. So if they get washed down the drain, it's biodegradable, so it doesn't matter. And those nurture soap has some, um, Mad Micas has some. Trying to think who else who else carries it. But those two places, I know for sure have them because I've ordered them. And they work pretty good. If the soap is opaque like this, where it's solid, it's not see-through soap, you have to use kind of a lot of the glow in the dark mica for it to work. But it works. Or you could just dust the outside of it. But of course, then when you wash it with it, it's not going to show. It just depends. Okay, so this one's a little bit more wide and squat than the others. And I'm gonna, I'm trying to make sure it holds together though. I don't want it splitting. Okay, there we go. <laughs> what did I say about glow in the dark? Oh, I wonder if I still have some. I used to have these little bars of soap that I made out of clear melt and pour. And they were bars like rectangular bars, but then I would take a spider mold and make a black spider out of soap. And I would put it in the other mold and pour clear glow-in-the-dark soap over the top of it. So the, the soap bar looked, well, the glow-in-the-dark powder gives it kind of a milky white appearance. So the soap soap looked kind of like maybe it was white or something. And it had this little black spider on top. But then when you turn the lights off, it glowed bright green. It was so cool. But they make skin-safe mica that's glow-in-the-dark, so you can use it in your soap. And you can get it at Nurture Soap. I think they still have it. The thing is with the, uh, hmm, how do you say this? The current global situation, uh, a lot of a lot of these um, companies are having trouble getting the glow-in-the-dark powder. But you can see if they have it in stock now. 
but those are the places I've got it. Nurture Soap, and I think I think Mad Mike has had it. I think, but I know for sure Nurture Soap did. I've got I've got some from them, and there was another company that used to sell it a long time ago. I don't know if they still do. Uh, but yeah, Nurture Soap, I would I would start there. And then you can have Glow in the Dark Soap, and you could also test it out and see if it works uh, works in your uh, resin. I'm sure it would, but it's worth it's worth giving it a try. And they had, I think they had glow in the dark green and blue, but don't quote me on that. I don't remember. It's been a while. I have the green one. But yeah, so there's that. There's a squat little pumpkin. That's super cute. Now let's do one that's half and half. I'll try to get it with the brown and then maybe like dust the top in yellow and then make the pumpkin. Let's see how that works. And you don't have to make these into round balls or pumpkins or whatever you could. I mean, you could, you could do like a whole fruit bowl, have like an apple and an orange and a pumpkin and whatever. Um, but you could make other shapes too, like bananas. So if you're going to make the fruit bowl, you could have like a banana soap and you could have a pineapple soap and uh, all these cool things. Um, but you can also do like, you could treat it like, like clay, especially if you can get these little pieces of soap really, really small, you could treat it like clay and make little shapes. You just have to be careful when you're, like you see how if I squeeze it too much, it starts to like crack and break apart. You have to make sure that as you're working with it, you're constantly smooshing it back together to make it as dense as possible. And it's kind of hard to do like animal shapes and things like that, but you could definitely try, especially if you get it, get a lot of, uh, get enough water in there to where it, it and, and soak these pieces long enough to where they're pliable. Okay. Before I start accidentally turning this into a pumpkin, let me make sure it's round. Okay. So there's a round ball. Go like this and mix it. So I was thinking whether or not I should post these on my Etsy shop. I may do it, but with the disclaimer that these will probably not be in perfect shape when they arrive. They're gonna definitely have that very handmade, I guess, boho type look to them. Okay, so I'm just gonna make sure this is pressed in there pretty good. And then to make the gold stick, because this already has the mica, first I'm gonna Try to get that down there. I'm going to use rubbing alcohol because I don't want this to get wet, but I need it damp so that the stuff will stick to it. I'm going to see if I can find a good spot. This looks good. Just put some alcohol in there. And then dip this in the gold and kind of roll it around a little bit. See, the gold is now, st and now it's sticking because of that rubbing alcohol, whereas before it wouldn't have stuck. I'm trying to get it to come down the side of the container so I can roll the edges. There we go. That's better. Okay. So now we got this really nice gold top to the pumpkin. There we go. All right, so now we're gonna do just like before, kind of squeeze it like this, whoops, wrong way around. And just kind of go around, squeezing and smushing it together a little bit. And you'll end up with like this two-tone pumpkin kind of. There we go pushing this back together and I'm going to take some of this gold because it's all over my fingers and just kind of go around the edge where the gold meets meets this uh orangey brown color hold on let me get this more firm there we go and that will help kind of blend the color down into that brown so it looks slightly more natural I mean what's natural about a shiny gold pumpkin but you know what I mean make the color transition be more natural looking Oops. So yeah, this is a fun project. You can see how kids could easily do this. They can roll the soap into a ball and then just put pretty colors on it. If you're doing these for Christmas, it's even better because you can keep them round. You don't have to worry about them turning into pumpkin shapes. And then if you're doing it with children, they can roll it in like the biodegradable glitter. They can roll it in um, different colors. And you could actually, before they dry, if you wanted to get really brave, uh, the adults should probably do this, but you could push in like a hook or something and you could actually hang them on the tree. And then that way, when the soap is, and, you know, do this like a few weeks before Christmas so that you can give them a good, I mean, this would probably need like a week or so to dry uh, in a dry area where it's not no dampness, no, and warm area if you have one. Um, so next to like a, like not next to a heater vent, but like in a room where there was a heat vent going, put it on a shelf with like a rack under it, under it so the air is circulated. Uh, yeah, I would give it a good week or so. But yeah, if you did that and then hung them on the tree, it'd be really cute and they're scented. And then um, as long as you take the little hanging hooks out of them, you could then use them um, as soap on Christmas. It'd be kind of fun. Oh, Wanda, the links are on the bottom of my video. So when this, this is a live, so I don't think it's showing up, but when it posts, actually all my videos, they should have it underneath. It'll say nurture soap and it'll say like mica and you just click that link. 
Oh, it is there? Oh, good. Okay. I wasn't sure if it showed beforehand or not. But yeah, I post the links to pretty much everything I use is in the links down below, except some of the stuff, like things that, because of, as I always say, the current situation, I try not to get demonetized here, but uh, not that I'm monetized yet, but you know, for the future, uh, basically because of the current situation, the supply issues and stuff, there are some things that are just, is pointless for me to link, like my stick blenders and stuff like that, because people just can't seem to keep them in stock. So I would link it, and then like a week later, they're not selling them anymore, and I had to go look for a new link, and it was just too much trouble. So um, I'll link like the micas and stuff like that, because those are generally always in stock, but the the tools and a few other things are a little bit harder to come by. And I actually do also sell some of the things that I use, like these soap towels and stuff. And I have my own like separate shop for that, and that's linked below also. Okay. There we go. So that came out really cute. So you got the shiny gold top, and that fades down into this uh, orange color. I'm going to get these little pieces of soap scrap off of there. And then put this. Whoops. That's the wrong side. Put that like that. There we go. So we got this half and half. See what you guys are saying here? Yeah, it's cleaning it up exactly. You found it. Awesome. Yeah, I got a lot of interesting, um, I don't know, interesting links, I suppose, to different shops where I get my stuff. And the best one really is, is Nurture Soap just tends to have everything. They have molds too. And they have silicone molds. And you more than likely, I mean, I haven't tested it personally. Just my opinion is that you probably could use the soap molds with your resin because there's the silicone ones. Just make sure it says silicone. They have spheres. They have, I'm trying to think what else they have. They have like little soap bar shapes. They have squares, I think, and ovals. I don't know what they have now because, as I say, with the supply chain issues, just full disclosure, they might not have any of the stuff. But when I looked, I do remember seeing those things at one time. So you could put, like, if you're going to make like a soap, like the little oval shaped ones, you could make maybe like little plaques or something out of them have like uh, words like you know pour a little layer of resin and then put like a thing down with like a what is that called the vinyl cutout or whatever of like a saying or something and then put flowers or something behind it and glitter and then glow in the dark on the top and then when you pulled it out when you flipped it over you'd see the writing and behind it would be like the the glitter and the stuff so okay i kind of like that half and half one let's do another one And these might be paintable, like maybe not not these specifically, but I mean the 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 what I'm doing here, this process. It might be possible to paint these like after they've dried, take some more mica, mix it with some rubbing alcohol, and then paint it on the soaps to get a different like design or something. Make them into so like if you're gonna do the idea with the Christmas ornaments, paint them to look like Christmas ornaments or something. That might be cute. All right, so there's a gold top again. There we go. All right, so I'm going to do like before, the right way around this time. And I squeeze it and turn it. There we go. And also the, the weak drying time is a total estimate. It depends on the temperature, the humidity. It depends on the size of soap ball and it depends on how much water you started out with that's why a lot of times i'll do mostly rubbing alcohol because that evaporates really really quickly and it saves on the drying time considerably okay there we go we got another like little funky looking pumpkin here perfect perfect okay we'll do the lines there we go i think it might be cute to sell these in like sets of three like one of each pumpkin or something Checking what you guys are saying here. Okay. I think Wanda disappeared into the 
<clears throat> to the mica mica shopping experience it's hard i'm telling you they have fun stuff over there they've got all kinds of fragrances so if you want to melt soap down and add a fragrance they've got all kinds of really nice fragrances there and then they they give you descriptions really good descriptions of the fragrances too like there's one that that stacy likes called star showers it's really 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 good all right there we go so there's that guy All right, let's try something. Hmm. Maybe we'll make some round ones just for the sake of being different. Some plain round ones. But yeah, hopefully you like pumpkin, pumpkin pie because that's what this smells like, really strong. Yeah, she'd be shopping. Yes, exactly. It's hard. I have to just not go to those websites because I see stuff and I fill my cart and then I see the total and I just like, well, maybe we'll wait until later because I can, if I put all the pretty things, it's like half the shop and that's, that's just not good. That's not good for being able to pay bills the next week. You know what I mean? But they, they have, they have good prices, but I can't afford to buy everything, sadly. Okay, let's make this one brown. I think what we'll do with these round ones, because I'm going to make a few that are just round, I think what I'll do is I'll try painting one and just see if that works. I'm trying to get the extra mica. And just see how, how that works. Like, see, you know, does the paint stick? You know, how does it work? Do I have to brush off the extra mica first? And we'll do some experimenting, because the last ones I did, I didn't bother to paint them. Because I, I liked them, how they looked. They were really rustic looking. And I guess rustic is a word, not boho. Rustic. But yeah, rustic. Yes, you have used soap and candy molds with resin. Yes, yeah, exactly. Let's see here. What else you're saying here? Yeah. Yeah, they have some fun ones around the holidays. I have to be careful, though, because sometimes those holiday molds are made out of that hard plastic instead of the um, silicone. So... Yeah. And I don't like those hard plastic ones. I've used them and they work okay, but I just, I think I just, I just, maybe I'm just indelicate. I don't know what it is, but I'll pop the soaps out and there's always one that gets ruined. So I just said, I know my limits. I'm just going to stick with silicone. Okay, let's try gold. This looks so pretty. Like it doesn't show up on camera, but up close, you can see all the individual colors. Like here's some teal, there's some pink, there's some purple, there's white flecks. There's some blue, lots of blue, all different shades of blue, and there's that green in there. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Some silicone ones do not bake well. That is very, very true. Yeah, the half and half molds. I have one. I don't know if this is the same thing you're talking about, but I have one that looks like a like a block or a glob of silicone, but it breaks in half and it makes a unicorn, and it's really really cute. But it's a uh, you. It has some really fine details. So whatever soap you put in it, the soap batter has to be really really thin to reach all the to reach all the details. And then if you make it thin like that. It takes a long time to set up because it's a an almost completely enclosed mold. So I have to let it set for a really long time. And even then, it doesn't always come out. Usually, I just throw it in the freezer and do it that way because it just never seems to set up by itself. So, But then again, I'm also not using melt and pour, which I think that mold was intended for. And if I was just you know doing what I was supposed to be doing, I probably wouldn't have this problem. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, a little bit more on this. First of all, let's pick up all these pieces. And you don't have to use these colors. You don't have to use gold or orange or brown. You can use whatever colors, micas that you have to make this. Were you able to find the glow in the dark, Wanda? You might have to use a little search feature at the top of their, of their page. I know about a year or so back, I went back to get more. I haven't run out of what I have, but I like to of the glow in the dark, I like to keep like to keep a little extra on hand. And uh, they were out of stock when I checked a year ago. I think it was a year ago. It was a while ago. 
and I haven't gone back to check again because I'm waiting to make my next order. I want to get some fragrances, and if they have it, I'll throw it in with that order. Okay. All right, another one of these orangey brown ones. If I can get these to paint, I'll show you either on the next live or it depends. If these are these might not be dry enough to paint on the next live, but whenever they're dry enough, I'll I'll show you. Okay, that looks pretty good. This orangey brown color, the the sugar and spice part of it is a little bit shimmery. The orange is not. So I have like a satin because I mixed that metallic shimmery color with the matte color. I ended up with like a satin color in the end. That was really cool. I wasn't expecting that to come out that way. Okay, got just a little bit left, maybe enough for one one last ball. Hello, Zoe. Hopefully Zoe is being a good kitty cat. I know my cats, well, they're good, but they, they don't realize they're doing stuff they're not supposed to. They like to try to help me make the soap. And they don't understand that that's not, that's not acceptable. <laughs> he just looked at the computer like he did to call me. That's right, Zoe, we're calling you. Come visit. I should uh, end these live streams with just uh, some sort of a cat toy going, like maybe get one of those little motorized like arms that has like feathers on the end that goes like this for the cats and just set it on the table and just leave my live stream going for hours and hours, like cat TV. Assuming you want your cat attacking your computer screen. I used to do that for my cat. I would turn on the TV and put, I would look up cat TV. Cause I didn't, oh, I didn't really have a TV. I just had like a large screen, but um, anyways, I would, I would turn that on and then put cat TV. And it was usually like some birds out in the woods or something sitting on a tree branch or whatever. Cat would stare at that. Like, oh my gosh, what is that? How do I get to it? They would touch the screen like this with their little paw, like, 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 why? It's so far. Okay, so that's how that last one turned out. Oh, he likes the app. Good. Yeah, my cat is really bad. So, like, not in a bad way, but just, like, I, I'll put that app up with the with the little, you know, the mouse running or the feather or whatever. And I'll set it like on my bed and he gets really interested and he like creeps up to it. And you know how they do the little butt wiggle and all that. And he'll, he'll just get so into that little app. But what he does is he puts his paws, like he knows, he figured out that touching the screen doesn't do, like it doesn't do whatever it is he's trying to get it to do, touching the screen. So what he does is he'll do that first. He'll paw the screen. And then I guess, I don't know, maybe he's expecting it to come out of the screen. And when it doesn't, then he puts his hands under the phone, like his, I mean, his, his paws under the phone like this, and he'll do this under the phone and it'll scoot the phone closer and closer and closer to the edge of the bed. And so I can't leave him unattended with it because he's, he's trying to get the mouse or whatever out of the phone and he's doing this underneath the phone. And, oh man, it's like, I wish I could just leave it running, but I can't because he'll, he'll do whatever it takes to get the stupid thing out of the phone. It's cute how they're so smart like that. I don't know. I don't know how cats, how cats know to, like, it's like they try one thing and when that doesn't work, they go to another. They're pretty resourceful when they're not being lazy. Okay, these are the half and half ones. Okay, I need to let these set out to dry and we'll get these little spheres drying also. And I'll try, whenever they're dry enough, we'll try painting them and see how that goes. So. Can you throw your phone on the floor? Oh no. Try to get the fish. Oh, I hope your phone is okay. Oh man, that's awful. Yeah, it has a cover. Yeah, mine does too. There's no way I'm falling for that twice. Yeah, yeah, mine mine has a a case around it so that when it falls it takes minimal minimal damage 
Okay, so it has a cover. Yep. So what I'll do also is when we can come back and add the little stems and all that, I'll I'll show you how to do that when these are ready. Probably I'll probably wait till they're dry, just because I don't want it to. Well, I guess. Mm, yeah. Well, I'll figure out if I want to wait that long or not. But we'll add the little stems. I might add like a little leaf or something. We'll see. I kind of like the rustic look of this, and I don't want it to get like I don't want bright green leaves on these more like rustic earthy tones. Maybe we'll do like a brown leaf or um, a different color or maybe like a t really, really toned down green. I'm thinking if you guys have any suggestions or maybe gold, a gold leaf would be pretty, I think. Yeah, fall leaf. Yeah, exactly. And uh, and then, like I said, we'll see about painting. So if you guys have any other suggestions, of course, uh, let me know in the chat or leave a comment down below. As you can see, I like trying your ideas. I think this will be cute for Halloween. And uh, yeah, and I'll, and I'll probably do another Halloween soap here soon. I wanted to do a couple more of the, the movie, you know, the based on movies soaps, but we'll see. Um, obviously redoing, redoing the Dorothy soap might be good. And there's a couple, there's a couple other movies I saw that I thought, oh, this would be really cute to turn into soap. But yeah, definitely leave your comments. And then of course, um, if you guys don't mind, if you enjoyed this video, if you like and subscribe, because it really helps me out. Um, like I mentioned, I'm trying to get to 500 subscribers so I can get the community tab open so that we can have more ways to communicate stuff. I thought that would be cool. And yeah, so thank you so much for hanging out with me. This was a lot of fun. And I hope to see you guys all on the next live and I'll see you all soon uh, on Monday. So have a great night, everybody.